Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So in today's video, I am excited to bring you a challenge, a fall DIY farmhouse challenge hosted by Sandra of the Swoobin's Nest. of my blessed nest. These two women have two great channels. So you need to, um, if you haven't already, go down to, in my description box and click on their links to their channels and go check them out. They both are wonderful thrifters and DIYers. They just do some wonderful trash to treasures. I'd love for you to subscribe to their channels if you haven't already. So in this fall DIY farmhouse challenge, they asked us to, as kind of an open invite, meaning we could do a trash to treasure, a furniture flip, a fall decor. They kind of left it open and I absolutely love challenges like this. So since I am a thrifter, my video is um, some DIYs where I took two thrifted little bench stools that I had picked up at a Goodwill and um, redid them to fit into the farmhouse style. So here's one of the little bench stools that I picked up at Goodwill for $5.09. And I like redoing these just as much as I like doing benches. I like that they have little arms on them just a nice place to take a seat you know extra seating or entryway and you know like I said 509 I love that little decal on the top but I will be painting it so you won't be seeing all this wood and I know that probably makes some of you you sad but there's always some brokenness to these and for some reason the seats are never attached. I don't know what people do to them when they reupholster them themselves, but, and then this other little one, which as you see is wider, but shorter. So, you know, these are still nice seats. And of course, everything's always got a little bit of brokenness when you thrift it. Um, and you know, for 509, I was up to the challenge of redoing these. And I don't know why there's two pieces of wood. Um, and that seat was not attached either. Just, I just never know about things that you thrifted. So the first thing I will do is I will take these cushions apart. And this one wasn't even stapled together. <laughs> so for these, really, I'm just... Um, I know that I'm going to have to have Chris, my husband, cut a new piece of wood. And ooh, yucky, that is so stained up and nasty. Um, but so really what I'm saving them for is not to use them to reupholster, but to use them as a template for what he needs to cut. <laughs> and as you see, this piece is very old, but it's very, it's not sturdy at all it is absolutely just falling apart and then they have some tack nails in it that just are um would not have been my choice to reupholster but you know you do what you do when you have your items so i can just pop these right out so i can definitely see why this was no the screws were no longer attached this poor board was just absolutely falling apart so this, the smaller bench had a lot of wonkiness. It was very loose and it was missing its bottom support. You can see here where the dowel should have been. So we're gonna have to replace that. We don't have the right size dowel, but that's okay. We can um, use this extra piece of wood that we have in our hoard to um, make a new support. So what we'll be doing is gluing it on and then letting that clamp that on and letting that dry overnight. And then with all the other little loose parts, um, he's just putting some tight bond glue and then using this little um, thing that kind of can get down into the cracks and put the glue in 
and then we'll clamp it overnight and let it sit up. So the next morning I remove all the clamps and then I'm going to pre-drill some holes for some screws so that this center will not fall off again, that it's nice and tight. Yeah, glue is a nice, nice fix, but it's not a permanent fix. So yep, you do need to add some screws. And since this was, you know, just a rough cut, you know, that it's not completely flush with it, I am just going to take the orbital sander and sand that area smooth so that it's nice and even and it looks like it's been there. So I'm removing these little felt pieces that somebody had put on. I must have felt like it was rubbing on their wall. And then I will be giving it a good cleaning of crud cutter just to get any residue or, um, any oils left behind it's a great prep for cleaning your items before you paint don't know if you noticed that when I took the little felt piece off it was missing one of its little covering the screw um, pieces and I like that little detail and um, all you do is take I did have the right size dowel to do this you take a little dowel and you take some type on glue and glue it in there and then I'm just going to use this multi-tool, which will cut this little dowel um, pretty much, you know, to the length that I need it. And then I will take my orbital sander and round this edge off. And now where the dowels were in the other um, little bench seat, I'm going to need to fill those holes with some spackling or you could use wood filler, whatever your choice is, because I'm just painting over it. But you definitely know that there was a missing part if you tried to paint over and leave that hole. So now that I've got everything prepped and ready and cleaned and spackled and fixed, I can now get started painting. So I'm doing an undercoat of this color um, place, Black Onyx, ready to lose that I just pick off the shelf at Walmart. And I'm going to paint the entire two pieces with this for their undercoat. And it'll probably take at least two coats. Um, this is semi shiny, so we'll see how it goes. So this is what the black looks after one coat. Um, so you can see it's not completely covering quite yet. And then I did add little pieces of tape in the inside. I was not going to bother. You know, this is where the, the padded seat part goes. And But I still want a nice clean line. I don't want to make a mess with my paint. So especially as a reseller, it's worth the time to tape it off. And I always like to start from the bottom. So I always get my two coats from the bottom and then I can flip it up to the, the right, you know, the right way it's supposed to be and then finish painting then now i flip them back so they're upside down again and start with my kills paint and primer in the flat white and this is the same thing i get it from walmart i pick it off the shelf i absolutely love the color of white that this is and so now it'll take probably you know three to four coats and that is because I choose to do thin coats because I like to distress my pieces and I don't want to have to work terribly hard to try to sand them. So this is what it looks like with one coat on. And then now that I've got three coats on the bottom part, I can flip them over. And then you can completely tell the difference between the one coat and the third coat that just so you don't see that black. I mean, I want to see it when I distress it, but I don't want to see it when I'm painting it. So that's the difference of just how many coats it takes to cover. So now after the paint has dried completely and I usually let, I usually let it sit overnight if I can. And um, so now I'm taking 150 grit and since it has, you know, like five coats of paint, you know, five to six coats of paint, it, you know, it takes a little bit stronger grit of a sandpaper to get down to some of that natural wood and some of that black. So what I do is just take it on the um, sandpaper on the corners and where I want it to distress. And so what I'll do is I'll kind of sand, push my hand a little bit harder on it to show some of that through. And then where I don't want it to distress so much, I just do a lighter sanding. And then to remove all the dust that I created from sanding them, I just use the air compressor and blow them off. I, I'm blessed to have a, one of these and it just, you know, it's a little bit better than trying to just dust them off. So it works out perfectly. 
So being a thrifter, I always run across pieces and parts, and this is one of the pieces and parts I ran across, and it was a dollar nine, and it is metal, but I thought this is the perfect applique for this little bench. And so um, since I is kind of an afterthought, I thought it would be fine just to use the Kills paint and primer on it. You know, usually I would spray it, but um, you know, it's not a heavy duty, gonna be sat at kind of bench, you know. So I think it will stay just well, especially since this paint has primer in it. So after applying two coats of the Kills paint and primer in flat white, I'm just going to distress it and let some of that black of that applique show through. So after getting this center and measuring that it was center, I just need to pre-drill some holes before screwing this piece in. Then I just need to dab a little paint on those screws to cover them up. And then to finish the wood portion of these benches, I'm just going to finish them off with a good coat of Verithane finishing wax to protect and seal that paint. So here are the new pieces of plywood that my husband cut. You know, you can see how much thicker they are and how a screw will definitely hold them in place when we replace this um, seat uh, back onto the bench. So now what I'm doing here is I'm just laying it top of my poster foam that I get on Amazon and I'll link it down below if you're interested. And then I just take a Sharpie and I trace where I need to cut. And then I use an electric knife um, like I said, I've only ever used this once to cut a turkey, but man, I have cut a lot of upholstery foam with this. It is just like a warm knife going through a frozen stick of butter. It just cuts it so nice and just glides through so easy. And so now I'm going to use some spray adhesive just to stick this piece of foam down to, um, the plywood board so when you're you know you're putting your fabric and your bunting on that it does not move around this is when i realized oops i got a little ahead of myself i always paint the bottom of this board these um pieces of plywood black especially when i'm redoing i know that they're not like that when i thrift them but i just like that finished side on that and the plywood is so dry it only takes one one coat so now I can move on to my piece of batting and so I just cut estimate the cut size because I know I can cut excess off I just can't add on so I'm just taking a staple gun and stapling it on to the piece of the board so then I flip it all around to the opposite side and pull it nice and taut you don't want to pull so tight that you cause um, you know it to pucker so especially, you know, you want to make a nice smooth edge. So the nice thing about the batting part is you don't really have to cut that excess off until you're done. So because it is kind of stretchy on the corners, but I do like to get it nice and stapled on there. And see how it's like a nice little pretty package now. So I like to use Painter's Drop Cloth as my fabric of choice for all my reupholstering. And so I pre-wash it just with the detergent. I don't put softener on it. But here's where I'm showing you. I cut it to size, but now I'm cutting the corners off. So unlike the batting that stretches, this does not stretch. And you do not want that built up of fabric on the the corner so I lift it up I see where I need to cut that little V in that I left it long enough so when I fold it over you don't see a cut mark but that you don't have all that extra fabric um, bunching up so now I like to roll my frayed edge my cut edge over so it has a nice finish edge and then get it stapled on so then I do this on the opposite side also. I fold over that cut edge, I pull it nice and taut, not tight that you're puckering the foam, and then try to make it, kind of try to staple it in a nice line all the way down. And then I'll go to the opposite sides and I will do the same exact thing. Fold over that free edge, staple it in a nice little line turn it around, do the opposite side, you know, make it nice and taut, but not puckery, and then staple it in a nice little line. Then when it comes to the corners, I always want my um, seam 
to be kind of, you know, I don't like to have it bunched up. I like to have it nice and smooth. And so that's where cutting that excess fabric off just helps so much. So you have a way to kind of tuck it in like a nice little package. And then I make it sure that my seam part is towards the sides. You know, you definitely do not want to put the seam in the front, you know, I mean, if it happens, it happens, but I like to make it so that the front of my fabric is nice and smooth. And then you cut off that excess fabric because that's where your screw, well, one, you want to make it look nice, and two, that's where your screws, when you're screwing it back into the chair, will be. And it, you don't want to get it all bunched up in that fabric because it will not have a nice tight grip. So I'm going to be grain sacking both of these um, seat pads and so I'm showing the difference between the regular masking tape and this other, I, would, I want to say that it's an inch and a half that I get at the Dollar General and so what I'm doing is just I grab my piece and I'm going to measure off to see where my center is um, and then try to put that exactly in the center and that's why it's just a little bit easier to run it off first so it's on the bottom of it sometimes i do do it on the top but this you know you just want to find that you want to take the time to find center when you're doing grain sack stripings and make sure that that first piece of tape is nice and centered and i'm going to take a regular size masking tape piece and i'm going to butt it up right against that first piece that i laid not over just butted right up and then I'm going to do it on the other side because the middle, the, that big piece is the piece that you're going to take off. And that's where your first paint is going to be, where you're painting your first stripe. So I'm using Apple Barrels Multi-Use in Black for my paint color. And then I'm using a makeup sponge that I get at the Dollar General for my paint applicator. And I'm just making sure one more rub down, make sure that it's nice and the tape is nice and on there. And I kind of do like a sliding technique. The bouncing technique that you usually do when you do stenciling would leave dark spots on this. So I do a really light touch and let that paint grab onto the, to the fabric. And then what I'll do is I'll do... Um, I'll go one way and then I'll go the opposite way to get the darkness that I want. And then who doesn't love a grand reveal of removing that tape as your stencil? Now here's where you can see why I choose masking tape. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking a regular piece of masking tape and I'm trying to kind of guesstimate how big I want the paint the space in between the next stripe not painted and the nice thing about this masking tape that you just you can see straight through it so you can see how much space and if your piece of tape is even I mean you can measure if you'd like but I you know I've done a lot of these and so now I'm buttoning up another piece of regular size masking tape to make my secondary stripe on both sides then I'm going to do the same, you know, the same little, you know, put a little bit of paint on, slide it kind of down, do it in one direction first. And then when that dries, do it in the opposite direction so I can get the darkness that I'd like. And, you know, if you watch my channel, you're not new here. I am obsessed with grain sack striping. I absolutely love to add it. So now to um, blend that paint in with this drop cloth fabric, it is rough to the touch. But the thing about the multi-use apple barrel is I take a little piece of parchment paper to protect my iron from getting paint on it. And also, you know, so it's just a barrier in between. And I take a hot iron and then I just run it over 30 seconds or so, you know, over the entire piece, down the sides and everything. And it just bonds and makes that paint nice and soft. It just blends it right in with the fabric. And for that secondary cushion, I'm just starting off with a smaller piece of masking tape, the regular side, and just finding center. But it's the same process as the other one, so I will not bore you with showing you the exact same stripe. But I did want to show you that, you know, the grain sack stripings depends on what size of tape you use. And you could cover this whole thing with grain sack striping and take up. But the thing about striping as a reseller, it doesn't matter how many stripes. I pretty much will get 45 for these benches. So 
three stripes, 10 stripes, 12 stripes, it doesn't really matter as a reseller. So here's where you can see the smaller stripe and how it turned out. Now I always seal my um, fabric in with scotch card fabric protector and I give it a nice and generous coat and this is smelly so you definitely want to do it outside. So since I used new plywood to um, make these seats, I needed to pre-drill and then use new screws where there wasn't really any screws left with these, but that way they are nice and tight. So I'm pretty happy with how these two benches turned out. I absolutely am glad that I thought about that little applique that I had thrifted. I think that just adds a little bit more charm to this little bench. And you know, the green sack, you can do whatever you want with the striping. And then see, I just love, even though that applique and that was a little beat up, but that's the fun of the farmhouse distressed furniture that I like to do. It just adds more character. So have I inspired you to look at benches when you're out thrifting in a different way? Or would you just pass these up and think that they're too much work? So I thank you so much for watching today's video and did you have a favorite of the two or did you like them equally the same and have I inspired you when you're out thrifting or you're garage sailing to look at a little bench like this in a little bit different way. I know sometimes they're a little bit needy but sometimes they just need a little bit of postering and a new paint job. I want to thank Sandra and Carol for hosting this wonderful event and don't forget to check out both their channels down in my description box along with the wonderful playlist of all the very talented creators that probably have participated in this challenge. And hey, thank you again so much for watching today's video. And if you're part of my YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you'd like to become part of my YouTube family, just hit that subscribe button.